Welcome to Community Talk Radio. This is Project Independence in You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. I'm your host, Rebecca Miller. And today, along with, of course, radio show producer, Christina Liu, um, co-hosting as we, Otto is not here today. He's out doing some kind of holiday extravaganza type thing. So, of course, we of course, we miss Otto. I mean, um, but, you know, Christina and I, we make a great team, too. So, so Especially when it comes to food, you know. I know. I know. Well, right. And, you know, we should mention that um, the first hour of the show, we were speaking to Kaiso, who was, you know, Cornell Cooperative Extension um, in Nassau. And we were just talking about healthy eating options. And, um, and it was wonderful. It was really great, very informative. And like, I liked what you said, Christina, too, is there are a lot of options, you know, and, and part of it is maybe having a little bit of everything indulging in the things, but, you know, kind of just, you know, portioning it out properly. And if you are going to indulge in something that's like a little higher in sodium, you know, the rest of your plate may be is a little lower in sodium. So right. don't not enjoy, but, um, you know, still be mindful. You know, that's like, I think one of our favorite words for 20. It is because you know what? It works in every realm of life, <laughs> you know? Cool. And I think no matter whatever the topic is we're talking about, you know, it somehow always goes back to being mindful. Um, and that certainly, you know, is true with food. And what we are referring to is our first hour uh, we interviewed Kai So from Cornell Cooperative. It was a great partner of um, Project Independence. And we did a little holiday eating, healthy holiday eating um, segment. So if you missed that, please definitely go check out that first hour. Because, of course, it was jam-packed, as they always are, with so many golden nuggets. You know, every time Cornell Cooperative Extension is on our show, I walk away with, like, some really good tips and tricks that I take with me, you know, all the time, whether it's food safety or food storage or, you know, just making choices. And I love having them on because, you know, for my own selfishness, you know, I get really great tips. So um, it's, it's just wonderful to have them as our partner to, to go over all this stuff and, and give us some good golden nuggets. Every time we have her on, like you, you were just saying golden nugget, we always, there's always some little golden nugget. Um, and I loved one of the questions I have, which, you know, I, I kind of get stressed sometimes when I project a meal, you know, I know who's going to be pushing food on me. I know who's bringing 18 pies, how, who's bringing ice cream, who's bringing, and, and, you know, and like in my head, I'm like, okay, I can have, like, I'm, I'm pre-planning, I'm projecting, I'm pre-planning, I'm sweating, I'm stressing, but you know, the, the person who's the pusher, you know, the food pusher who's like, oh, you're, you're oh, oh, aren't you going to have that? You're only going to have one, sir, who does it? What she said, I liked. And I have yeah. to figure out how she goes back to that yes. person and says, well, you we actually, <laughs> we had to do that with Jay's dad because ever since, listen, I've been with Jay for over 20 years now. And his dad always, that's his thing is to just throw food on. And he never seems to eat. Everyone else has like a two pound, you know, plate and he never seems to be actually eating. Um, so what we, you know, we, we finally took matters in our own hands and then reversed it on him. So anything you try to put on our plate, we just put on another plate and then that plate was for him. So, you know, you can make it a fun little game. There you go. So a lot of tidbits, both, you know, psychological and also, right. um, you know, great healthy choices and meals. And, and we all had our own little favorite kinds of things that we like, or we like to do and, and the tradition and um, all of it. It's, it's, it's a nice time of year, you know, if you're lucky enough to be around friends and family, um, it's really, it's really, you know, a great time to enjoy those traditions and, and pass them on pass on those traditions, maybe pass on a little bit of a healthier tradition to the, you know, right. to the next generation of, of people. But that's um, right. And I, so I'm, you know, I'm a big sampler, right? So I, I love, I love a dessert. So instead of eating one of each, a whole piece of cake of each of the things, you know, I'll take like a little sliver or, you know, a part of a cookie, you know, just to sample everything because I feel like that's just my due diligence of the holiday season. So 
I think at the end of the day, it's just making the plan um, that works for you while enjoying it and enjoying the company of whether it's your friend or, you know, your senior group or your family, whatever it might be, um, is, is just certainly a nice thing to do for the holiday season. So, yeah. Um, great tips. I'm glad we can go in back. We, we have a, a better head on our shoulders. We are prepped, um, to make better holiday, uh, choices. You know, we went a little rogue yesterday, as you had mentioned earlier oh. in our show, yeah. Um, but we had our Project Independence holiday party, um, which was, I think, saying a success is an understatement um, because it, it surpassed that. Certainly there was over 200 people came. It was some new faces, some older faces, you know, with the program. Um, but everywhere you looked around, everyone just looked to be having the best time a jolly time. It was just, you just saw smiles everywhere. It was a really rewarding day. I know for myself um, to look around and just see how happy everybody was to be together. It really was. And uh, one of the most enjoyable things was, I believe it was Denton Elementary. I don't think it was the middle school. Mm -hmm. Denton Elementary came and it was the band and also the choir and they were doing holiday songs. Oh my gosh. Um, Cutest it was ever. so sweet. And I love that the actually the orchestra couldn't make it. Um, they might have had another concert. So they pre-recorded um, some music. So when the chorus was singing, it was to the orchestra playing at the same school. So it was really just lovely. And the kids were so cute. I just so cute. I, I'm I, very good. Very they good. They were great. Quite, sure. quite a talented bunch. Um and I just think that those are always, and that's thing I hope that in 2024, Project Independence can, you know, possibly dive, you know, into more. Because I really do think the intergenerational component um, is such a lovely thing. You know, when I looked at the faces of that room full of yeah. seniors, watching these adorable little elementary school students sing, they... It, it just they looked so happy and warm and it looked like it just made everybody feel good. So I think it's so nice to have that kind of, you know, super young mixed with the older population is just um, yeah amazing. Maybe you're onto onto something. Maybe there is like an intergenerational choir that, you know, they can come up with. I mean, you hear those sweet young voices and then you have you could like, you know, get some of the adults singing in there too. And it's just so sweet. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it just, there's so many different programs that can be done that I think um, it just, you know, on both sides just always is such a rewarding um, experience. So it was a lovely, lovely thing. We had um, two men were doing caricatures, um, which were adorable too. They were incredible. And I just, and I loved seeing, you know, our PI members walk around with their, you know, caricatures all um, proud. And we had some crafts going on. There was so much food. There was music. Um, there was a grab bag. There were these lovely raffles um, that community services put together that were so nice. And of course the best blanket. gift that was raffled off was a stunning blanket created by our project independence blankets of love. Um, group which is it was just spectacular so it really was beautiful and I have to say the resident who won it was I, I, so excited it was so beautiful I think she was like even you know welling up a little we all yes, are she did. It was yeah such a beautiful blanket made by the hands of you know another resident in the town just so lovely such a, such a yeah, nice and I think it know, just it takes you back you know to uh, it was a great reminder for myself as well you know especially during I'm very fortunate I'm very blessed you know to have a a, a fam, big family and, and little ones you know so we're just constantly giving gifts and everyone knows I love to give a gift um you do so great gifts. But, <laughs> thank you but it's you know that's my my love language um but it's it's, you know, I was, I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of seniors, some of them, you know, may have be lucky enough to have, you know, children or grandchildren nearby or friends or family, but a lot of people are alone. And I think it was a great reminder um, to be thankful. And it was the little things. And, 
you know, it was the simplest gesture of a little gift, you know, went such a long way for them. So it was just a great little um, reminder for all of us, I think, um, to step back uh, during the holiday season and be grateful for um, all that we have and whatever it might be. Right. Everyone's got different measures of what it is to be grateful for them. So I think it's it was certainly um, one of those days for me. So great, great day. And then we had a great little photo booth area. Um, was I was fun. deemed, I, I will wear this with a badge of honor, the fabulous photographer. Um, so my grandfather would be quite proud that that uh, honor was bestowed upon me. Um, you know, there was all these different seniors who would run up and be like, um, excuse me, are you the fabulous photographer? I said, that would be me, I guess. So <laughs> certainly <laughs> step on up. So we were doing like full photo shoots um, with props of candy cane. So it was really, really a nice, lovely day. So and and it was nice that people, I think, got to meet, you know, we had open seating. So everyone was kind of mingling right. with people that you might not have, um, you know, known before. And and I think that was cool, too. And and I'm hoping that these people will join us in 2024 um, for our, our advisory committee meetings that will be coming up, too. So it was um, it was nice to get a whole mix. So great day. Um, we certainly, yeah. our, our team worked very hard on the event. So it was nice to have um, yeah. a successful day to kick off the holiday season. So great stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, next week's show, we have on Dr. Kaplan, um, which is from Northwell Health. We'll be talking about all about allergies, yes. which is a topic we certainly all um, discuss. Uh, you know, it comes up on the show a lot. This was actually a personal request um, of Otto, he told me to track someone down because, you know, I think, you know, especially as the years go on, I don't think I know anyone that doesn't have allergies, you know, it's one way or another, you know, whether it's seasonal or something. I mean, everyone seems to have allergies nowadays. Um, and it's always this, is it allergies? Is it a cold? Is it COVID? You know, I mean, there's like a whole, you don't know right. what the heck is going on half the time. Um, so it's, it's be great to have Northwell on to uh, to discuss that. So that's next week. That's going to be a great one because it's like you were saying, is it pe like are, some people think they're lactose intolerant and they could actually yeah. be allergic. Like how yeah, like, do you who knows? know if yeah. you're one or the other? Um, you know, people become allergic later in life to things. Yeah. Like why does that happen? You know, it happens Absolutely. to me. Wine. At, yeah. You know, I, I used to drink wine when I was younger, but, you know, about 15 years ago, I started having reactions to it so why does that happen in like later life it's so true and i know that especially with lactose you know i know so many people that you know we're finally they're all of a sudden like wait what what happened now right. lactose is a problem like in my life so um you know i'm just saying that i better never I, as long as i could still eat bread uh for my yeah. <laughs> the rest of my life um but there are and, and i think there's little in you know and it's it might not be a full-blown um, allergy to certain things, but I even know with myself, there are certainly things that I might have a little sensitivity to, you know, that you could like realize like, oh, wait, you know, like that didn't, you know, certainly agree. So I think uh, it's a huge topic. We're going to have uh, certainly a lot of questions, I'm sure, um, for Dr. Kaplan, but I'm excited to dive yeah. into that next week. Um, and then we just have some, a bunch of other great topics coming up. Um, of course, we have some repeat shows because of the holidays. But we will have in January, we have an author um, who lives in Beverly Hills. We'll be zooming in from Beverly Hills. Um, she wrote a book called Once Upon a Time in Beverly Hills, which is a fun uh, fictional story. But she's a senior and looks like a vivacious one at that. Um, so she will be on. Uh, we also have on Christina Marini, um, who is the assistant professor over at Adelphi University, and she's going to discuss the REACH Lab and the RISE study um, in particular, which is how veterans cope with stress and how it affects sleep and well-being. She presented at one of our advisory committee meetings, um, and it was a really interesting um, way, and, and hopefully we'll do some kind of uh, stuff with her in the future, right, Beth? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. She was terrific. She really was. I really so enjoyed that. that. Her on. And then we have Nicole Christensen, who's been on the show before, oh, yes. um, who is the president and founder of Patient Advocacy and Care Coordination. And she's also an author as well um, from Crisis to Calm. But she's going to discuss how to keep calm and get a patient advocate. So 
we certainly know this question comes up uh, often. Right. And so, she used to be there. with a uh, Harvest um, I- oh, Island Harvest. Island Harvest, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Long time ago. Um, but she's great. So, and I, I actually subscribe to her newsletter, and there's really great programs they do and presentations. So she um, will be on too. So a oh, big mix. To that. Yes, we have a huge mix of um, topics on the show, but um, I'm really excited. And once again, if you have a topic of interest that you think um, we should certainly dive into or you want to learn more about or, you know, you have you met someone that would be great for the show, please call 311 or 516-869-6311 because we'd love to have them. You know, we want to have segments that people um, certainly want to hear. So. And, yeah, and, I mean, Christina, we, hundreds we and hundreds and hundreds of shows, and she gets every single one. Um, you know, we have a wonderful speaker. And I remember the early days of Project Independence, where it used to be like every segment was a different person. I mean, yes. that was that was complicated. Or yeah. was it a half an hour? It or... was, well, the very, very beginning, it and was the radio. It, right. it was like 15, you know, it was each person. And I mean, you really can't do much of an interview as you know you know yeah. in that short of time and then I went to half hours um and then we decided you know that the hour long which certainly does because you could really dive in more to the topic and I mean half the time we run out of time we're like oh my gosh we'll have to have you back on you know and that's with an hour so um it's certainly uh, the format works best um for us so great stuff uh, I want to remind people that if you were listening to this live, which is December 15th, um, the town is holding its winter holiday celebration at Yes We Can Community Center at 5.30 p.m. Um, this year's event will have light refreshments, music, dancing, performances by the Westbury Community Band, some carolers, of course, an appearance by Santa Um, And there'll be a Christmas tree lighting and Kwanzaa celebration and a free toy giveaway. So there's a lot going on there. The event is free of charge. Uh, You can call 311 for more information on that. All right. On that note, let's take a quick break. Um, You're listening to Community Talk Radio, Project Independence and You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. And we will be back shortly. So I get this call from my grandma, and she's like, What's a podcast, and how much does it cost? So I tell her, podcasts are like radio shows, but you can download them on any device and listen to them anywhere at any time, and they're free. And then she says, I see, but where can you find good ones? And I'm like, go to wcwp.org slash podcast and check out the lineup of original shows or download any podcast app on your phone or tablet and search for LIU Studios. And she's all like, oh, that sounds easy. And then she asked me what an app is. LIU Studios Podcasts, available on any podcast app. You know, those little button things on your phone screen. Just ask your grandkids. Welcome back to Community Talk Radio, Project Independence in You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. I'm Rebecca Miller, of course, along with Christina Liu. And we're talking about what's going on in the town. Um, Of course, we talked a little bit about our holiday party that we had yesterday um, and all the food too. We, we did talk about the food. We did talk about all the great things that happened. We had a wonderful choir and we had some terrific raffles and we had some artists doing renderings. It was really kind of fun, but um, there were some really great desserts too. So um, I have to say, I am just... You know, I mean, good. still like a sugar coma. I don't know. It's I have sweetness on the brain right now. So um, you know, I get it. I get it. But you know what? I, you just got to. Uh, gotta it's all on. about balancing it. Yeah, it's OK. You yeah. balance it out. You yeah. know, a little here, a little there. Definitely. Um, and that's so, really it. So we have a great event coming up at. Um, yes, we can. Do you know what? Do people have to register for that event before break? You do or? not need to register. It does. It doesn't say that registration is required. Um, but, you know, just certainly call 311 if you have any more questions any about questions, that, but it does not yeah. it yeah it doesn't say anything about registration um for that program a uh, and i also i believe you have been scheduling exercise you know speaking of moving we're trying to get people to move more um because then you could you know maybe ha- consume a little more uh as long as you're balancing it out so for 2024 what can we what does the exercise program look like 
Well, it's going to look very similar to what we did um, fall of 2023, the same amount of classes, which I think are 17, maybe even 18, including what um, the Fridays at Yes, We Can, though that's kind of separate. They do a balancing program with NYU Langone. Um, most of the classes will be the same. Um, we may do where we had Zumba Gold. We may just do more of a dance for fitness. And that just kind of... Um, has a lot to do with the instructor style, and um, and that uh, we had a we had a new instructor start, Andrea Botner, and she um, is at Camera Park on Mondays, and she's doing more of aerobic classes. So we haven't really had aerobic classes before. Um, so we felt it out a little bit. She had two classes back to back, low impact aerobic. So what we're going to do is um, instead of doing the same class back to back, we'll do a low impact aerobic. And then after that, she's going to do a chair fitness, which really oh. is, um, is, is a great option, you know, because there are times where we're not, any of us are not feeling up to doing something maybe you know we, we twist our ankle or what, whatever it is and there are always options to exercise on the chair so um and she and she's great at that and really enjoys it she's actually also teaching that thursdays at yes we can you know we're going to continue we're back at fashillo park which this was the first time we were back since the pandemic um in the fall of 2023 so we're going to continue that um, so yeah, everything is, is pretty much the so same. What is the low impact aerobic class look, look like for anyone listening? Like what, if you uh, are, it's, what, it's what is that kind of generally, thing? you know, the aerobics is more getting the heart rate up a little bit, um, as opposed to like a regular fitness class where that's not the focus. And, you know, um, Andrea will have like a routine that she will do that everybody, everybody will follow. Um, it's kind of. I want to say how do you, how do you differentiate between like a dance for fitness? It's similar. Right. It's similar. But if you think more like Jane Fonda back, like that was kind of, you know, we talked more about aerobics back then. Now we talk more about cardio, but it's, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very similar. Um, and all of our classes are very instructional. All of our teachers are, you know, we require them to be very instructional, very detail oriented and do a lot of modeling, you know, this is how you, you know, come into a warrior two pose and you show people and you go through all, all the details. So um, we are again, only going to, I want to say allow, but you know, two classes per person because the we're getting, you know, every kind of session gets busier and busier. Um, though we will have a waiting list. So if people, a lot of times people don't show up, they sign up and something happens, they're not aware of conflicts. So then we can call upon the other person. Um, and some of the classes just aren't as full as the others. So sometimes we can, if somebody would, would want to take, you know, a class that's kind of light, we can offer that up too. So right now we're still going with the two class minimum and um, not, we just ask that people don't take a class that's the same class back to back. Like on Wednesdays at Tully, we have dance for fitness at, you know, it's going to be 10 and then 11. So don't stay for both classes because those classes do get full. But if you want like a back to back class and they're different classes, that's fine. And that makes sense right. too. And then, so the February is when the exercise classes come back. So into the plan is um, to start toward the very end of February, yeah, um, yeah. beginning of March. And the reason we do that is obviously January is just the, the weather and it's post holiday. And then February too, we used to start more toward the middle of February. But what was happening is that, you know, there's a lot of school holidays and there's um, uh, town holidays too. So we have two town holidays. So people were coming back and we were like, okay, we have to take a break for this week. And then the next week you have off for Lincoln's birthday and president's day. Right. So in addition is the weather, you know, we don't want people coming out to, to this show. If it means you're going to risk taking one fall, it's just not worth it. So we are looking toward the end of February and um, 
or to or to the very first week in March. Mm -hmm. And and that really I, I think it's going to be starting the last week in February. Mm -hmm. And anybody listening, they will be getting all the information I have, you know, we'll send out letters, we will um, well in advance of the registration date and registration will probably be sometime mid to the end of January. Mm -hmm. So okay, great. And you'll sure. hear here, we will certainly announce it on the show. Yeah. Um, so everyone will be aware. And I have to say, kudos to you, Beck. Uh, it's a humongous undertaking that just seems to keep growing that you oversee. Um, there's so many different pieces. Uh, and, and it's really ran extremely smoothly and, and organized. So kudos to you um, for pulling this off, because I think it's such a, you know, the exercise piece of Project Independence is such a wonderful um, addition. You know, there's a lot of the younger seniors you know, join that and people who, you know, really want to, you know, maintain their activity level. So it's a, a great, great program. And we all say the socialization piece right. of it all is huge, too. So it has so many amazing rewards for um, our 60 and over uh, community. So right. great, I great have program. to say, though, if I may, I want to thank, you know, yeah. a lot of people help out with the program, because it is such a continuing yeah. program between the waivers and the contracts and registration and there's so many things in it and it's constantly going and there's um community services gives me a lot of help you know mary and lisa and alexis they're always kind of helping me and taking calls so um it's a it's a it's a nice team and you know it, it's funny because um the woman who's coming on in two weeks she we were talking about the fitness program and she said that as as we get older and, 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 and really at any age, but mm -hmm. um, the impact, the positive impact that exercise has on and not just socializing, coming in and socializing with the people that you see every week, which is really important. But it's also when you go home, how mm -hmm. does that impact the way you maybe speak with your spouse or your children or your grandchildren or your friends, you know, you is it's, it's a positive impact. And, and, you know, because you're doing something positive for yourself. So um, it really is great. It's, there's a lot of benefits from, yeah, from coming out and exercising. And, and of course, you know, we also have the exercise classes on North Hempstead television. You could follow. Perfect. You took the words right out of my mouth. And that is something um, that I think is a great addition that you're able to, you know, either just do that or that could be a supplement to, you know, doing these other uh, classes in person. But especially during the colder weather, I think it's such a great option to have that, you know, at your leisure to do, you know, in your own home is really, really great. So I, uh, I definitely think that and that's something that I think everyone's always in a panic we always get our call saying like you're not getting rid of North Hempstead TV or, and they'll be the first one to say you know I went on and you know North Hempstead TV I think is down you know the exercise class right. wasn't on so our our seniors are certainly out there and aware um, of all the classes going on on North Hempstead TV so great and great also stuff. the show Project Independence in you every time there's an event, um, you know, we have someone comes up and says, you know, I really want to speak with the person who was doing the Medicare updates. I really want to talk to the person who does, you know, Meals on Wheels, whatever the topic mm -hmm. is, every, their people are listening, and they're getting such great information. And they're, you know, so appreciative. So, um, you know, if you have any questions about any of the shows that we've done, even in the past, if you can't even remember yeah. the guest, just, you know, it's like a puzzle for Christine and it I. Is. Like, I know. We, about we it. Like... Wait, who was the guest who said this? We have to get, and we talk yeah. it over until we, we kind of, you know, get it down to three guests. I know we, we have to like dig. I, I try to dig into like the roller decks of my brain of all the shows. And I'm like, like trying to pull out the keyword pieces. Like who could it possibly be? You know? Um, but that, that's our that's our brain game. You know, that's how that's that's how yeah. Beck and I keep our, our brains healthy um, by by trying to to look back at these things. So Christina um, has a much great. much better recall than I do. But, you know, I try. I try. <laughs> Lately, I don't know, but I, I certainly try. <laughs> um, I also just want to remind people that you still can donate to the Veterans Donation Drive there they kind of extended it it's probably going to be for a week or so i'm not sure what the new exact end date is um but they the supervisor was actually at our holiday party yesterday and shared with us 
that they have collected a lot of gift cards for the veterans, which is absolutely That's awesome. Great. So they're still able to, you're still able to do that. They're looking for gift cards for ShopRite, Stop and Shop, CVS, and Walgreens. Um, Clingy Martin Park in New Hyde Park is a drop off. So you could just come in and say, you know, I have a gift card. We have a special box for it. Um, Town Hall, Michael J. Tully Park um, as well. Or you can just give 311 a call. And they actually have a special number to arrange for pickup if you are, are unable to drop it off. It's 516-869-7703. Um, so definitely um, check that out if you're in the store. You know, it's, it's a nice thing. You know, they did a wonderful Toys for Tot drive. Um, as well. So there was a lot going on um, in North Hempstead donating to um, to the, the community, which is, is really, really great. Um, we have some, let me go. You would think it's time. getting toward the end of the year and that not, that things would start quieting down, but it just I seems know. like the opposite for some reason. It, it does. It day. seems like it certainly does. Uh, you could tell by the crazy amount of papers spread out all over. It's like I have like an assembly line going on. If you could only see the behind the scenes going. Yeah. Um, but there are still um, some bridge classes will be going on. It's a great class that meets at Yes, We Can. Alverna Lewis is a Project Independence member who came to us and said she would like to start this group up. Those are always some of my favorite um, groups and programs is when our seniors say, you know, they have an idea to provide something. So they kind of become our, you know, local uh, volunteer. And the bridge class is so popular that there's two different sessions. Um, there's the beginner class. That's for people who kind of have a little bit of knowledge, wish to improve their skins and uh, skills. And then the intermediate is if you pass that kind of basic knowledge phase and you want to go to the next level. Um, so that meets on Wednesdays. It will be continuing, you know, obviously in 2024 too. They might take a little break in January once we have those dates. Um, I will certainly let you know. But right now you can go on Wednesday, December 20th. And there are two times. So there's 10 to 11 is the beginner. And then 11 to 1 is the intermediate for that. So... If you're interested, certainly join that group. Um, our Golden Hearts Blood Pressure and Bingo at, at Roslyn Community Center. That's with our nurse, Joanne, and um, Oon Lee, who is our, our new social worker. They provide this really fun program um, over there. So you can play a little bingo, but get your blood pressure checked and you know have the option to talk to a social worker about anything. Um, so it kind of covers all your bases. This is at the Roslyn Community Center. It meets on Thursdays from 12 to 1. Uh, so the next one for the, uh, the last one, I should say, for 2023 is December 21st. So mark that down. Our social discussion group meets virtually still. Um, this is on Thursdays from 1130 to 1230 via Zoom. Um, so you could certainly join that. They, uh, Andrea Taylor is great and she always comes up with some wonderful questions to kind of facilitate yeah. um, discussion. So, uh, and that what's nice is that that's virtually. So uh, sign up for that. And then we have our men's group that meets over at the Hillside Public Library. This is at 1030 on Fridays. Um, so if you are a man and live in North Hempstead or six year over, you are welcome to join this program um, as well. It's quite the vivacious group. Uh, but I always love that even though they have very differing opinions on things, they somehow all, you know, come back each week and, and let each other speak. So that's really nice. Um, and also, which kind of in theme with um, our first hour of our show today, on Wednesday, December 20th, there is going to be a program at Magnolia Gardens called Intuitive Eating. It's presented by Cornell Cooperative Extension on Nassau County. It's going to introduce you to what intuitive eating is, what it is not, um, who it is for, how you can start incorporating some of the principles into your life. It's really about avoiding mindless eating, knowing how to listen to your internal hunger cues. Um, and once again, just be mindful. So that is Wednesday, December 20th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Magnolia Garden. So great program. I mean, that really is kind of very similar to what we were talking about in the first hour of the show when we were, you know, speaking with Cornell Cooperative, who is doing the same program. 
Yeah, and, and they're great because they provide home. these monthly chats over at um, Magnolia Gardens. Yeah, and you know they they give like these little recipe cards, and and I love that they you know as as Kai had mentioned in the beginning of the show um, that they create these new little recipes together. So it's fun. You get to walk away with it and have something you know tangible that you could um, incorporate in your um, in your own little holiday season. So um, definitely check that out but you must register for that so call 311 or 516-869-6311 um also coming up on december 29th is mulch fest tree cycling so if you don't know what to do with your christmas tree you can um bring it up to on beginning friday december 29th to uh the hempstead north hempstead beach park to have it um mulch made into mulch so circle of life All right, let's take a quick break. After the break, I'll continue talking about what's going on in the town of North Hempstead with, of course, Christina Liu. You're listening to Project Independence and you talk of the town on LIU Public Radio. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS app store on Apple devices or the Google Play store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. Welcome back to Community Talk Radio. This is Project Independence and You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. I'm Rebecca Miller, and of course, along with Christina Liu, our radio show producer. Christina, there's so many ways to access access our program. Um, You can watch Escape Us. You can't escape us. You can watch Project Independence and You and Talk of the Town on North Hempstead TV Channel 18 and 65 on Optimum channel 46 on Verizon Fios, and also on North Hempstead TV. The shows usually air 2 p.m., but you can um, go to www.mynhtv.com for the up-to-date schedule. Um, Also, you can watch online at WCWP Studios YouTube channel or on the Project Independence website. So, so many different ways to access our program. Um, you can always call 311 for all this information. Christina, I know we still have stuff going on. Um, what What's happening in the town of North Hempstead? Well, those were a lot of the programs that are coming up. Obviously, we are fully um, in the January uh, planning process of things in 2024 um, and beyond. I had mentioned earlier about our advisory committee meetings. Um, and the advisory committee, I'm going to have to give a plug for it um, because it's it's really a place that you. I encourage everyone to check out. You could say as much as you want. You could also say as little as you want and just listen. We're going to continue meeting um, both in person at Clinton G. Martin Park and um, virtually, you know, via Zoom. Uh, we always have a really great speaker every um, meeting. So we kind of start off the meeting with a speaker. Then it's an open forum, you know, for our advisory members. And this is really where so many wonderful um, ideas came out of it. This very radio show um, came out of it. You know, some great transportation, you know, parts of the transportation program. Uh, It's it's such a great thing. And this is where we kind of have our project independence ambassadors. You know, we love to call our advisory members because it's the place that we, you know, disseminate information to and, and our advisory members then go to, you know, their friends, their family, their senior group, whatever it might be, and give that information. So I encourage everyone to please check it out. Um, and it's a mix of so many different people and, and we have different community leaders come and, and all are welcome uh, for this program. So and, the and- next... Yeah. All of our major programs have come from the ideas yeah. of the residents at the advisory. I mean, even the transportation program, yeah. you know, someone came up with the idea, well, why not try to use taxis? And mm-hmm. how could we how could we possibly do that? And, you know, lo and behold, you reach out to a taxi company and then everything, you know, has exploded to the point now where we just received our, I think, fifth one million dollar federal grant 
to continue the program for another three years. Um, and, you know, and of course, circle of support, you know, the way that these things come up, it's not someone didn't say, hey, why don't you come up with a program called circle of support? It's, it really came out of the need for advocacy and not exactly. just during nine to five at the convenient times of Monday through Friday when, you know, every agencies are open. But what do you do after hours? So, you know, you create this this circle of support, this booklet that, you know, is um, a available also um, digitally. Right. As Otto always yep. likes to point out. And it just it just has all the really important phone numbers and places and locations and people in your life. Um, and you, you have this booklet that you could just look at, you know, if you do wake up at, you know, in the middle of the night and something's going on and you need to kind of figure out what to do and, you know, and that, and, 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 and what about the radio show? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I you know, I had mentioned earlier, because that is, um, you know, our very, you know, Jerry Paritzman had brought that up at, and we miss Jerry terribly. And he so much, yeah. brought up, you know, the radio show. And it's because of him that we're here, you know, today. Um, I'm glad that, you know, our fabulous Dan Cox, you know, uh, pumped the brakes on some of the crazy ideas of doing this every single day. Um, but it's, it's really, you know, one, and it's, it's all comes from, and that's what I think is important for anyone listening to join the advisory is because, you know, we listen, you know, it's not just a formality meeting. We're really trying to, you know, collaboratively work together. You know, I mean, Project Independence is what it is because of obviously, you know, the staff of Project Independence and the leadership and in the town of North Hempstead, but it's really because of the seniors that are part of the process. And, and they're the ones that tell us what's missing, you know, and that's what always struck right. me about advisory committees, you know, is we don't necessarily know you know, what a particular need might be, you know, in a certain community. You know, I always think about that, you know, in um, we had our pedestrian safety committee that came out of the Great Neck advisory right. because Great Neck, there was a lot of people who were walker, you know, they were walking around, you know, it's more of that kind of thing, you know, there's high rise buildings, you know, so it, it's a different community than, you know, uh, a Roslyn or a Westbury, you know, so everything, even though there's similarities a amongst all of our communities there's certainly more specific ones that are tailored to certain areas and that's a place that you're able to kind of voice um these things so uh the next meeting we, we don't have a meeting in february uh, january due to weather but february 21st um we will be back all are welcome um you can call 311 to register um or 516-869-6311 once again, our meetings are at Clinton G. Martin Park in New Hyde Park or um, via Zoom. So uh, you have kind of both options for that. Um, and Beck, you had mentioned, and I, I know we talk about it, you know, briefly all the time, but I'd love for you to give kind of an overview um, just so anyone listening, which um, certainly a bazillion people are utilizing this program, but is our transportation program, which is such a huge part of PI. So give us a little overview of the the transportation program. So, of course, the transportation program is um, for food shopping and for going to your doctor's appointments in North Hempstead. Um, so basically, you just have to be 60 or older in the town, be a resident of the town of North Hempstead. You could rent. It does. You don't have to own there, it's not means tested, meaning it's not income based. You just call 311 and um, at least a day in advance. And please call before 4 p.m. because after 4, we're already confirming the rides for the next day. And we don't do same day rides because, you know, we can't guarantee that a taxi company can get you and can get you home. So it's always best to call in advance. Um, we are not an emergency service. So if something comes up, um, you know, and your doctor wants to see you urgently, unfortunately, we can't take you to that appointment because we can't guarantee that the taxi company is going to have a car available in your area at that very moment. But, you know, we're here. We can take you if you're, you know, in Port Washington and you have an appointment in Mineola, and, you know, it's Monday through Friday and it's a doctor appointment. 
you know, physical therapy, we also take to, um, you know, a lot of people rely on the transportation program for essential needs, essential services, you know, dialysis, um, sometimes, you know, even chemotherapy, and they regularly use us. And, you know, a lot of the call takers at 311 will kind of help regular riders, people who go Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1030, you know, and they'll set help set that up for the week. So, um, you know, as long as you're in North Hempstead going to a supermarket too, that's no charge. Um, you would go right, it's door to door. So the beauty of our program is that it is door to door. Um, and we can take you to a supermarket that we ask that you go twice a week. Um, no more than twice a week to the supermarket um, at no charge. And, um, you know, it's in, and for the doctor appointments, it's either $5 each way, $5 going, $5 coming back, or $10 going, $10 coming back. And that all depends on the distance that you're going. So the further the distance, it, it could be $10, which is still a huge savings because the rides are, you know, quite costly. Um, you know, we also have buses that um, go to Dell buses, we subcontract out that go to some of the senior groups in the town. We also have buses that run through the town of North Hempstead Community Services and our department. So we have bus drivers. So any questions you have about transportation, we also have a mobility manager. Of course, Sherry Baton cannot do it without her. She manages the program and, um, you know, really has relationships with a lot of, I want to say the regular seniors that use the program and anybody that calls, she's very attentive to. Um, and we have two great taxi companies that go. We have, um, of course, Deluxe and all island and both of these taxi companies have been with us for for years and years and years and and they even know our riders and in fact sometimes the riders will use the taxi company on the weekend to go you know privately somewhere so um it's it's a great program um and you know it's not for everyone though you know we you have to be able to transfer out of your own wheelchair the drivers are taxi drivers so they can't assist you it's just like a regular taxi ride they pick you up and they drop you off they can't go to the door so you have to be able to get to the car on your own um and they will help you know put if it's a wheelchair or a walker and something needs to go in the trunk that's fine so um, as long as you can transfer. And if you can, if you have any other mobility needs, transportation needs, you can call and speak to Shari. And she has a lot of, you know, options too. you know, there's able ride, there's, you know, ambulatory um, you know, places, ambulance services. So there's all kinds of things out there. Again, yeah, just call 311-516-8696311 with any of your questions be happy to help out oh, and i think that that's um a perfect uh little review and i always want people to i mean sherry is so busy you know constantly helping people and and i think that you know i see the calls that come in and it's you know people who you know want some kind of transportation that's not necessarily covered through our program but the fact that you know sherry serves as kind of the travel agent um of project independence to get you from place a to b and and these taxi companies that we're partnered with are great because they do offer a lot of different programs and discounts, you know, for um, the residents of North Hempstead. So always just call through in one, even if it's something that you're not sure of, you know, uh, if we could help you with, you know, Sherry will certainly do her best to uh, get you connected uh, the, the least expensive way um, to where you need to go. So um, great, great program. Um, and, the numbers are huge, certainly. So people are certainly using um, our transportation program. So as Beck said, once again, always just call 311 or 516-869-6311. And another thing about the transportation program, I think what also, you know, as I sit here and listen about all this is, you know, the fact that Project Independence, um, our staff is a, such a small staff, um, but that allows actually for us to, you know, really stay connected and share information, you know, so there's a lot of times that someone 
you know, might be using the transportation program. As you mentioned, Beck, even the taxi companies themselves are extremely tuned into, you know, if a regular member is acting a little weird, you know, some something's out of character or, you know, so then that gets brought to Shari's attention and that then comes, you know, to, you know, Paul or myself, you know, for the social worker kind of referral or nurse referral. Um, so I think that that's, really what makes Project Independence so special is that we have this ability to, this grassroots, you know, ability, I should say, to really get people connected and, and to make sure everyone's safe and, and checked in on. So it's a really wonderful stream of communication that kind of goes on amongst all parts involved. So, you know, Christina, why don't you give kind of a brief overview of the human service edge and just yeah. kind of how that all functions? Because like, I liked how you kind of said it's all brought together. All the programs are like interrelated, but we have a wonderful yeah. staff of. Yeah. Of so we service. have um, five fabulous social workers um, that we subcontract through EAC network is our partner. Um, for for our social work services. Um, and then we have three nurses that are subcontracted through our partnership with Northwell Health. Um, they are such an amazing team of women who, and some are new, some have been with the program for um, an extremely long time. Um, but they are really our, we always say, the heart and soul, the boots on the ground. You know, they are in the homes of the seniors, really connecting with them and, and getting them you know, to so many different uh, programs. And, you know, there's whether, you know, my favorite thing is when someone, you know, calls just saying, hey, and I want, I need my gutters cleaned, you know, but there's such a whole host of other services that they might need assistance with that they, you know, didn't know how to, you know, ask that question or if someone could help them. But now that they have this connection with one of our amazing staff, you know, they're able to now get connected to all these different things. So, what I just love, and you know, it goes back to what I was just saying before, is the interconnectedness of things, you know, and the fact mm -hmm. that we have that ability to kind of pool our resource, you know, like, look at all the people we have on this radio show. It doesn't stop there. You know, yes, we have right. a fabulous interview that's, you know, archived, but, you know, that information that either they send me or, or the research I do on them then gets, you know, sent to our social workers and nurses. So then that gets part of their, you know, research list and, and referral list. So it's it's really a great system. And then, then they come to advisories or they, you know, present at health chats, you know, so it's really like this great little train we have that we're able to, you know, get all this information out and, and build our, you know, project independence, you know, toolbox of, of partners, you know, which, uh, and, and that was certainly something that always sticks in my head is, the advisory committee meeting we had not too long ago with all of with a good sampling of our partners and right that was had, terrific all those people you know yes we know that you know but to see it you know in action and how all this coordination that goes on and that's really how you service you know uh, our population right and you know what i'm thinking of i'm sorry that yeah. I, I just it's just you know, I'm, I'm recognizing a lot more is, okay, so Project Independence started as a NORC almost 20 years ago, not quite, 18, 19 yeah. to the original. Yeah. And we still have a lot of those original people. And a lot of them only really, didn't really need any of the services, but yeah. they were part of the community and in their 70s. And now they're in yeah. their 90s, you know? Yeah. And, um but that's the it's, point of the program, right? To age with it. Right, and, you know, right, to... right. Aging in place. And here we are. So actually, um, I think that's the show for today. That is. So I want to um, thank everybody for listening to Project Independence and You, Talk of the Town. Of course, want to thank Christina and uh, for another wonderful show and such great, great information. Um, Project Independence in You is a production of Long Island University Public Radio. Dan Cox is course our engineer join us again next friday at 10 a.m on liu public radio goodbye and have a wonderful weekend